we are on our way to the agricultural town of Toribio in the foothills of the northern part of the Cauca district, home of the Nasa people. They are one of Colombia's largest indigenous peoples. Colombia's 50-year civil war devastated this region. The high mountains and narrowness of the plains make this region a strategic corridor for drug trafficking. Toribio became the center of the Colombian War. It has been attacked more than 500 times. Shootings and mortar fire became part of daily life. The FARC turned in their weapons this summer, but guerrillas and paramilitary groups are still active. We use small cameras not to be conspicuous. The situation is still fragile and tensions arise when strangers appear. Torribio was, was really a place in, in the middle of the, the worst conflict. Huh? For two decades, this, this was a complete war zone. Esto ha sido una comunidad que ha, digamos, fortalecido un tema que, hemos, que, que aquí se llama como control territorial, ¿sí? Y, por ejemplo, la fuerza pública aquí pues, no, no accede porque, digamos, ellos tienen sus propios sistemas de seguridad y eso también ha funcionado con otros actores. El peligro, de todas maneras, es muy grande porque estamos en un momento de reconfiguración, de transición después de la firma de unos acuerdos de paz y esperamos pues, que el Estado garantice, dé garantías para la seguridad de estas personas, pero también, más allá de las garantías de seguridad, que garantice el respeto a la autodeterminación de los pueblos indígenas, que es, digamos, una de las cosas más importantes en todo este proceso. When night falls, the hills light up like a Christmas tree. Clusters of white lights glow in the darkness as far as the eye can see. Cannabis. Yo creo que realmente unos tres años atrás ya fue lo, lo más fuerte pues del, de la, del cultivo. Un boom de la Sí, marihuana. ya fue como la, la gente se dio cuenta de que era importante, entonces empezaron todos a querer hacerlo. Ajá, más pero o menos unos antes, tres años. Antes hubo producción. Antes de hubo producción en una muy poca cantidad. Ajá. Porque estaba muy estigmatizada, entonces la gente no, la marihuana no. Entonces ya luego empezaron a incursionar en lo, en lo medicinal y ya se dieron cuenta de que sí servía, entonces ya todos quieren hacerlo. Clay Pierce, a U.S. citizen, ended up in this area by chance. I get city at night. I was so amazed the first night I was here. My uh, the family that takes care of me drove me around the hills, and they are alive with lights. It literally looks like a cityscape. It's crazy, but it's it's a dreamscape. He got invited to stay with a local family to help them grow weed because he's been into it all his life. A lot of mold, a lot of ongo. I think that's probably the biggest problem they have here, is the mold. Um, if we can figure out a way to stop it or change the way the grow growing seasons are, it could make a huge improvement on the cannabis. Huge. Most of the farmers grow commercial weed, high on THC and with hardly any CBD. There is a big market, cannabis recreated market in Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, that's being fed by these uh, crops. Not only does the plant need artificial light in the night to prevent the plant from flowering too soon, they also use chemicals to eradicate the mold and pests. There is a high humidity level in this area and it's perfect for the molds. So too many illnesses, lack of variety, and not organical uh, procedures to cure the plants. The original cannabis land races that grew in these hills are the best in the world, according to experts. Cannabis, like Limón Verde, are high on THC, but also on CBD, perfect for the medicinal market. But the plant grows very slowly, and the buds are not as big as the commercial ones. They went for the indica plants because they were bigger buds, but also higher percentages of THC. So the varieties that they have here that are cultivating with uh, extending the photo period are very high in THC, all of them, extremely high THC. To teach the farmers how to grow properly with the right kind of strains, 
Julian hopes he can set up an alternative against the big companies who will, in the end, squeeze the most money out of this territory. They are in the business to make profits for their shareholders. Small farmers are being pushed out of that market. It is crucial that, that they do now conquer a space in this first opening medicinal market. They should not expect that that can be the solution for everyone who is involved here in cannabis cultivation. They are not going to give away money because you are indigenous people and they want to help you. No, they are trying to make big businesses and they are sharks and you are little fish. So, how can the indigenous community make sure they will not be overrun by big companies? Can they organize themselves, create a kind of fair trade system? From seeds to oils to extracts, find out in part three.